Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're doing a closer look on Monstrous. This is the deluxe hardcover book one. Now I believe this is volumes one, is it one, two, four, one, two, three of the, I want to say one, two, three of the, of the trade paperbacks. It says this massive edition collects the first 18 issues of Marjorie Liu and Sana Takaday's beloved and multiple award-winning comic series, plus special extras including never-before-seen sketches. Makia Half-Wolf lives in a world gripped by war and alternate ma matriarchal? Expect me to say this stuff. Matriarchal uh, 1900s Asia, brimming with arcane dangers as she struggles to overcome the trauma of violence and regain knowledge of her past. She becomes inextricably linked to an eldritch monster of tremendous power. This link will transform them both and place them in the crosshairs of deadly powers, both human and otherworldly. And then there's just an absolute ton of awards and stuff on the back of this book. So this has been, as I say, a long time coming. I couldn't wait to get this in oversized hardcover. I have absolutely loved the monstrous series so far. The trades were really, really well built and the, the outer covers of them was quite a thick card. And so I was really impressed with that. And I was actually looking forward to getting this thinking, well, you know, she doesn't do that many comics. So hopefully this being an independent book, you know, all the effort we put in to make it the, the best kind of version. Now, as I've shown you guys, Previously, in my sort of pickups videos and things, the, the original copy I got was a bit dented and kind of flex a lot, so wasn't the greatest kind of indication of quality. Let's take a closer look at the book itself in a second, show you the, the, the standard they have kind of gone for, which as I say is a bit disappointing, but we'll compare that to uh, another image hardcover and just kind of let you see the, see the kind of difference. On the front here we have an awesome piece of art of Makia Halfwolf, her demon side and her kind of friend here. We've got a really nice black edge with this inlaid kind of metallic monstrous and then we've got our creators and book one. A whole lot of praise on the back. This is by Image Comics, it's marked as 49.99 US and it's rated M for Mature Epic Fantasy. So before, as I say, I get into looking at the art, I wanted to have a look at the overall build of the book. So if we take the book here, the hardcover is very, very thin, so you find the book itself flexes really easy. See how little effort I'm kind of putting in and the whole book kind of flexes? So I don't really see the hardcover here holding up to any punishment or protecting the block all that well because it just it just flexes way too easy. It does make it for a thinner book and it doesn't take up as much space on the shelf because it's not as thick a hardcover, but I just think that's a that's a bit of a cheap out. To give a comparison here, let's take the Killer Be Killed and if we put these side by side, you can see here there's a significant difference in the thickness of the hardcover. Even though the Killer Be Killed looks kind of black, it still looks thicker, so even with the illusion of the eye, it's still a thicker hardcover. And to give the comparison here, the flex is nowhere near the same with this one with the same amount of effort. The other thing that I noted between these, these are very similarly built books, is that the spine on Monstrous is glued compared to Killer Be Killed is a fully sewn spine. Now that means that when you look here, there's a lot of glue across the bottom of the the book. It also looks like it's been glued in in sections. Now that's actually a good thing compared to gluing in one solid kind of bar of glue across the spine, which people have been noting recently has been an issue on the Scott Snyder Batman book. It doesn't allow any flex. This being glued in in sections means that basically each section kind of folds over quite well when you open up the book. So if we do a sort of traditional spread out of the, the book overall, just to kind of stretch the spine a little bit, 
then what you'll find is that the the binding lifts up as you'd expect it to, which is really good. But what you'll see is that, as I say, it flexes specifically on where these kind of glue parts are. I don't know how well you guys are going to make this out on the camera, that you get kind of clusters that fight back a little bit because they're trying to stay with their block of the glue. So this wants to stay over here because it's part of this block. But then once you get past that block, you know, it rests totally fine. So in this case, I would say the, the ribbon is actually really important to staying on the overall spine because it's part of the structure of how the, the block is glued in. Whereas on typical binding, it's all sewn to itself. So then even if the ribbon comes off, the binding will still hold because it's joined to itself overall. And that's where my worry would come in with this book. The, the weight of the overall pages over time could just kind of pull on it. And you might find that sections of this kind of come out. Um, it might be fine to kind of glue back in again through some of the repairs and things I've done recently. But I guess we'll have to just kind of play that by ear. To give you the comparison, as I say again, I noted straight away that Killer Be Killed had sewn binding because the flex was just so much easier, but then also you can actually see the the kind of stitched sections, if I can find one here. So yeah, if you look in here you can see there's actually kind of the the stitching holes and stuff in the in the kind of book. So when this one spreads out, it spreads out as just as well as as that one does. But as I say, I believe if this ribbon part was to come off, because this is properly sewn together, the spine would actually just hold totally fine. Now see, this is a combination of glue and sewn, and I would much prefer this on sort of all books going forward. So getting back to Monstrous, it's a really nice looking book overall. So we've got the map of the sort of known world. Some various art and kind of intros. So let's say it's 1 through 18. And then we get the covers of the, the chapters on each kind of chapter as well. So there is quite a lot of text, but with the size of the book, I think that really helps. The art is kind of paint tones, but also kind of sketchy kind of tones. Um, it's just really beautiful overall, and it has its own its own kind of feel. But as I say, with the way this binding is, it does kind of kind of fight you as you as you kind of go through. It doesn't lie as nice at the at the start of the book. Now, most books I read, I place my phone on the on the other side anyway, just to hold it down as I'm kind of reading through the first little bit, so it doesn't bother me too much. But I did note, as I say, the way this kind of block seems to work is that you get to parts where the book will eventually kind of sit good. Like say more here, so it's okay. But each block, as I say, kind of kind of works to itself. We go from darker and lighter tones depending on the context of what's kind of going on. It's kind of her lighter and darker kind of sides. And as I say, there's a lot of text in here, but you do get a nice white background on it so you can read it really easily. We get little kind of excerpts throughout the book where it's from kind of various poets or cats and you get kind of like these written pages surmising things or um, introducing a new kind of section of the book. So it's quite interesting. You get this kind of teacher cat kind of thing teaching the other little kind of kittens. And it just gives you a nice refresher point. So if you were reading the book over a longer time, this is a good refresher point throughout your book. If we go to the back now.
we get a glossary of the main terms they've used throughout the book. So we get the characters, supporting characters, features, themes, terms, stuff like that, because there's a lot of world going on in here. We get a letter from Marjorie Lou to ourselves, and then we get various kind of art sketches as to what kind of inspires the, uh, the kind of story as, as things kind of go on. Um, So I don't know if this is at any point what the characters will look like in the story. I believe these were original concept kind of things. And then we have the, the various variant covers as well. And our, our creators here. So, a really nice book. Overall, just disappointing. The quality wasn't really up to the rest of, uh, of image standards, in my opinion. Alright, so now that we're done with the, the closer look part, you'll have seen that the build quality isn't that great. It's just not up to par as to what I would expect from Image at this point. I know that individual kind of creators get to decide what kind of styles or formats their books are kind of done in, but it feels like they cheaped out on this and that's just not good enough in my opinion. I hope that if they do the book 2 down the line that it does get a much better bind, more akin to say the way Killer Be Killed's been done. The art is gorgeous and I just absolutely love it in the oversized kind of format. There is a lot of text in this book as well so I find that that helps with reading the text when it's kind of sized up but generally the, the book is just gorgeous. It looks amazing and I, and I love that kind of aspect. The story is really good. It basically as they follows our um, Machia Halfwolf. I can never pronounce her name right, so you know, sorry if I'm saying it completely wrong, but I always say Machia or Machia in my head when I'm, when I'm kind of reading it. She's basically got this kind of um, demon inside her that kind of comes through her arm and kind of is this black kind of. I don't even know how to explain it. It's kind of like a, a goo ghost type thing. I think kind of like Raven, um, but it comes out of her arm. And this kind of being wants to feed a lot. So she's somewhat kind of special or royalty or important in that kind of sense. Um, she's trying to do these kind of duties and fight these wartime based kind of things as things go on. She meets a few other characters and builds up I guess her kind of crew over time but she's not interested in having a team, she's just trying to get to her end goal. We've got a lot of different characters kind of coming in with just different kind of shaman powers and old gods and new gods. This world is kind of split between four or five different kind of creature types where we have kind of almost full uh, sort of amphibian kind of animal characters, we have kind of partly human, partly kind of animal kind of creatures, we have humans which are typically kind of witches and things, we have these gods and demons and then we have these cats who are basically the kind of poets or storytellers, the historians of the world and um, but also the mis mischievous kind of side so I, I kind of feel that at some point down the line we're going to find that the cats have been kind of screwing with us and, and part of this is their fault but that's not you know in, in this book. Now I say I enjoyed it overall. I don't want to spoil the story for you guys. It's about diversity. It's about, you know, acceptance. It's about war. It's, you know, covers so many different kind of topics. Um, but it's also just a really good story about this girl and her journey with this demon slash god on her side. And you know, as I say, how she deals with that hunger and the other kind of things that are that are going on. I really just can't recommend this book enough. I love Marjorie Liu's kind of writing and I have loved that since reading Early X-23. She deals with sort of female characters in sort of turmoil and overcoming kind of things really well and it's just, you know, some of the best of both worlds. We've got amazing art with amazing writing to, to kind of back it up. So I would highly recommend that you do check out this book. The format is entirely up to you. You know, I can't really tell anyone to buy this hardcover when I say I don't believe it's been done to the same quality and it may potentially kind of come off the bind or break over time. Well, I guess we'll see. But as, I say, as far as reading it, it's totally fine for now. I just wish they'd sewn the binding. It's, it's kind of disappointing from, from that side. Let me know below guys if you've picked this up, you know, if you picked it up in the oversized hardcover, if you got this version or I believe there was a Barnes & Noble um, kind of pinky alternate kind of cover or say if you picked it up in trades or, or kind of singles, you know, what your what your kind of thoughts were or say if you plan to kind of, kind of pick it up in future, I'd, I'd love to know that as well. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one and as I say rate and share with your friends if you think that they'd um, like to know a little bit more about this 
hardcover as well. Hopefully I've been able to, you know, let you guys know a bit more about the quality of the book itself in this video and not just, as I say, the story. These videos, you know, are supposed to be there to, to help you in your buying choice and not just, you know, spoil the story for you. So, so let me know below if that is, is kind of helpful. As always though, thanks for watching, it's much appreciated and I'll see you guys next time.